I um, Horseman Academy for the third week of October. Um, of course, we've already had a phenomenal conversation um, around tax preparation, um, also understanding how to monetize that business. We even got into skincare in our last conversation with Cynthia. But today, um, we try to make you some money, especially if you're in the healthcare field, especially if you are a nurse. Now, y'all, traveling nurses will get into the bag. So I'm going to have to figure out exactly how much more money can be made. And I need to decide if I'm going back to school. Yeah, you but, do. But wait, hold on. <laughs> See, she already jumped in. She already jumped in. So before we get to our guest today, be sure, follow us on Instagram at The Poor Horseman. Follow us on YouTube at The Poor Horseman. Um, hell, after today, we might have a LinkedIn because it sounds like I might be able to get to a little of this money that's out there. So without further ado, let me introduce Nurse Rose. Nurse Rose, please introduce yourself to the audience. Hello, I'm Nurse Rose and I'm happy to be here. No, no, we, we, are, we are excited to have you. So let, let's, let's just jump into it real quick. We're going to get to the backstory and all that good stuff. But I want to know, how can nurses make more money? I just want to start there. Well, first of all, nurses have a lot of knowledge. Okay. So it's all about leveraging your knowledge, putting your knowledge in front of the right people and having them pay you for your knowledge. You know, getting paid for your knowledge always sounds good. Yeah. So, so we're going we're to go back into that. But, but let's get started to get to know you a bit. So um, are you originally from Houston? No. Sorry. Okay. Where, where, whereabouts? Whereabouts? L.A. Well, whereabouts in L.A., though? I was born in Los Angeles County. Okay, okay. L.A. County. I grew up in Pacoima. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, my wife is from, like, well, Ventura, Oxnard, that area. Okay. So so I'm very familiar where you're from. I, I would love to live in L.A. if it didn't cost $40 million for a 1,000-square-foot house. <laughs> you know, so... It used to didn't cost that much because I sold my house in 2019 okay. for half a mil. Okay. Mm -hmm. But now what size, though? See, that's that's the kicker. It was about... 3,500 square foot with like a 5,000 square foot lot. Where, where did you live though? Granada Hills. Wow. That that is, you're right then. So what with has happened? Pool. What happened these last five years then? Inflation. But now nah, it's different in LA. It, it, the, you can live in Watts. It's and true. That same house that you would have sold would probably be a thousand square feet for that same half a million. In it's so true. My house that I sold now is um, a mill point two. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I don't know what, what's happening right now. I'm a big fan of real estate. Of course, I'm always going to support home ownership, investing, et cetera. But LA is just not the place, right? Matter of fact, the whole West coast, um, you can go to Oregon, Washington. I think all of those places are overinflated, overinflated, but you can, there's a lot of money to be made. Yeah, yeah. I in mean, West Coast, in the West Coast, you think more so than the South. Definitely. Even with what's happening in Austin and Dallas, even Houston, we've got some pockets. Most now. definitely. Okay, we we might. So this is going to be a separate conversation, y'all. <laughs> We're going to have a separate conversation. I'll stand by that. Okay. So L.A. Um, born and raised L.A. Um, when did you make your way out of California to here to Houston? I made my way. I left um, California around thirty. Three at the end of thirty three, thirty four. Okay. Four. Okay. Um, happily divorced. Okay. I got a move away order with my um in, in as part of my divorce. Man, move away order is crazy. Like, <laughs> no lawyer, no lawyer. I handled it all myself. Okay. So wait, wait. I had to do it. Yeah. So you um left clearly a relationship, but did you feel like you needed to come this far away from L.A.? Most definitely. Okay. And we don't have to get into that backstory, but do you feel like you've made a good move to here? Most definitely. Okay. Were you in the healthcare field in California also? So I've been actually in, in nursing since I was 16. Okay. Wait, explain. How, how did you get into the... Hold on. <laughs> how did you get into this at 16? I was a certified nursing assistant at in high school. So I actually graduated kind of high school a little bit early. I had a kid at 16. Okay. Okay. Um, and my my aunt, who was a registered nurse, she was like the first nurse in my family. Um, I was taking care of my, my child at, at, at that point, 17. Um, and she was like, what's going on? Yeah. Get up off the floor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute. Is she looking? Is she here? Yeah. Because how she literally said get up on the floor and I was literally on the floor sitting with my baby. Yeah. I was chilling. I mean, <laughs> but sometimes we need those angels in our life that you don't even realize that the message that you're, they're going to give you will just resonate. It so, resonated. Yeah. So I could imagine that you saw her as the first nurse in your family. So at least you had the model. She is. She's the literally the only she, nurse. She was the blueprint. Exactly. Yeah. So at least you had that. But then from there, um, having a child young, which which is a it happens, you know, so it's not like um, and I'm sure you're, you're blessed now that is, is your is your child now grown has 
going on to do great things? He is doing great things. He's 22. Okay. He has his business, his own business and okay. profit as well. Um, he is, but I have six total. So wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> you didn't even finish the other the part. How which he got told me to get up off the floor and what happened? Yeah, but now <laughs> we've got more pressing matters. We're gonna get back to you I getting off the floor. But you have you personally, or, or is it like a blended family? I have six children that I've birthed. You personally? Out of my body, I have birthed six children. Come on now. I, I would have, hey, I, yo, it, and you mentioned earlier, we're not gonna get into age, but black don't crack. It does not. It does not. Because when you mentioned like the 33 and 34 year, at first I thought you was about to talk like 1930s, mm -mm. like <laughs> when, when black people were allowed to like vote and stuff. But no, no you're saying your age. That was my age at okay. that point. So you've had six children. I have six children. All here in Texas with you now. Are they across the country? They they live with me in my home. They're all here. Yes. Six. Why you bring out any of them here? I would I would have liked to meet some of these kids. Today. Well, first for starters, um, my eldest is actually with my twins right now because you got twins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is this is a phenomenal. Go on. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. All right. My bad. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> they actually were sent home from school yesterday because they were a little bit sick. Okay. And so um, he because I typically um, pay even though he's does his business from home, um, I pay him from time to time to do things for me, such yeah. as, you know, stay with my children. Child care matters. Yes, yes, when they're not at school. Yep, yep. Um, I, I recently, um, my three-year-old recently had strep. There, they're yeah. three. And um, the symptoms of strep in a three-year-old are different of like my 10-year-old, for example. So we didn't even know strep until like a week later. And it was like a, we thought it was just like a gastro That's a stomach thing. stomach problem. Yeah. I was like, yeah, she'll be fine in a few days. And the next thing I know is like, it just kept going downhill, downhill, downhill. So um, I wish I had someone I could pay. That's how it manifests. And so my knowledge, see, you already want to pay me. You see how that goes? Uh, wait, hold on. You you Jedi mind tricking me. To, do I need to pull out my wallet now? Yes, is that you what do. It is? See, yes, you, you do. Get me on retainer right now. <laughs> no. So, okay, good, good. So. You already had a passion for healthcare. You saw the model. Um, finish the get off the floor story. Let's hear. Okay, it. so taking care of my child, I'm chilling on the floor because at that point I had moved in with my boyfriend's mom, and <laughs> and so she let us have her living room, right? So that was where I was chilling at, and she was like, "Get up off the floor." But so I had to look behind me because I'm like, "Wait, Loki, are you here?" But she's in New York. Okay, okay. And so I'm like. Auntie, uh, what's going on? Yeah. You know, like, where are you? Like, I thought she was literally at the house. I looked through the windows. I had to double check. Yeah. Um, and she's like, you need to go to nursing school right now. CNA program, uh, three months. Yeah. Program, um, do it yesterday. And then you go to your the next step and you keep going because you need to make money. Yeah. 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 So that instilled in you, one, maybe some discipline that you had to get at because going to school just in general, especially as a, a mother at 16. Well, yeah, back back. I actually was going to medical school before and because I got pregnant, I chose not to. So yeah, you, you might be the most, it, this might be the greatest interview because you have in the span of 10 minutes, we found out that um, when you were a young mother, um, Two, you already tell nurses how to get to the bag. I sure do. Three, you've um, birthed six children. That's a blessing, by the way. Thank you. Um, you clearly don't look your age. I don't. Uh, <laughs> you also have tried to get me to pull out my American Express twice. <laughs> <laughs> and then, lastly, you have a aunt who didn't live with you, who had the intuition to tell you to get up off the floor. Exactly. We've established that in 10 minutes. That's how it goes. I don't know what the rest of this is going to be like, but I don't know if we're going to be able to top it. Phenomenal. I don't. Okay. Uh, we got to be able to top that initial 10 minutes. Trust okay. Me. Okay. So, so tell us about your nursing journey. Like, give me, give me the steps from there. You go to school, you get involved. When do you see that this is a passion of yours? So healthcare serving has always been a passion. Okay. Because, like, you know, like I said, I was, I wanted to go to med school. Yeah. Applied to Berkeley. You can't bring a baby to the dorm. Yeah. So um, after I became a CNA, I realized that I wanted to continue more. Um, however, I also realized in my arena that Spanish was a language that was necessary. And so I took my son and I moved to Mexico for about a year and a half. I told you I would top it. Wait, wait. <laughs> I told you. 
How how old were you when you 17. left the states? Seventeen. And moved to Mexico. Seventeen. Now you're in California, so you went to what? Uh, Montemorelos. Okay, okay, all right. So you almost went to Central Mexico, though. That's not even yeah. like um, Universidad de Montemorelos. I went to a university. Yeah. See, so I, um, I, while I, I'm not fluent, I can get around the language. I'm very um, fluent. <laughs> it, clearly. Uh, so you went. You did your own Spanish immersion. Yes. Okay, and let let's detail how was that experience being in Mexico. It was wild. It was okay. great. Um, I learned a lot of um, nursing foundation in Spanish. I was able to um, become like literary, literary um, smart yeah. in 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 manic, uh, men, sorry, mental health versed terminology. Okay. Okay. And so um, that way. You know, if I had to use my knowledge base in the healthcare field moving forward, because I was taught with the medical management tech terminology in Spanish, reading, writing, um, communicating. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that was the foundation that I had I built. How long did it take you to pick up the language and would you recommend others in our community to, hey, you need to find time to pick up that second language? La primera día. Okay. The so first what, the first day, day you started. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because you have to. Exactly. But 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 there still had to be some. Now, clearly, I can tell that you're you're curious by nature, enjoy to learn, and also enjoy sharing what you learn. I do. Which which I'm grateful you're giving us this time. But the language barrier is difficult for a lot of people. So your curiosity also had to be ambition. Like where you knew you're there for a purpose. Always. And Everything you were there for how long exactly? I was there for a year and a half. Is your oldest fluent also? It was his first language. Wow. So English is his, he's an ESL student. He is an ESL student. <laughs> he is an ESL student. That's pretty crazy. So did he have some difficulty when he came back to the States? He did. Okay. A explain how maybe you supported him through that. So when I when he came back to the States, I actually put him in a um, English as a second language yeah. program. And um, at that point, they thought that he had learning difficulty. Of course. And yeah. he actually did. He did have a processing delay. It could be perhaps that English was his second language that contributed to it. Nonetheless, it followed him throughout his whole career. Okay. Um, however, it didn't stop him. Yeah, it, it's uh, the only barriers are the ones that we um, allow to be a barrier. You know, we can continue on. We can put, you know, details in place that make things easier. But oftentimes we allow ourselves to fall subject to those barriers. Mentality. So, yeah, yeah, we definitely do that. No, so this is you. We, we are topping it. I, I was worried. I was like, yeah, we. This is not this is not even the beginning. Uh, oh, we, we <laughs> wait, hold on. This has got to be the beginning. All right. Because now we're getting into your career. OK, so you've got. Your dual language, you've completed your CNA, you've also went and got a university education. So now are you an RN? No. Okay. I have a um, a year and a half of semester credits okay. in Mexico, Mexican language. My son had asthma. Okay. And I thought it was better for him to get health care in U.S. Okay. So I, I stopped there. So even though that those credits won't transfer anywhere, I always will have them. And, and the fact that I can speak Spanish... It's priceless. Agree. Yeah. I mean, having that second language is um, so I'm in finance by trade. Um, I can pretty much read anything you put in front of me. But if you ask me to start having a conversation, hey, I'm going I'm to go text Mex. Vamos a hablar. Yeah, I, I can't speak that. <laughs> so I, but I know every I know the words, but uh, um, I don't feel confident enough. Practice. That's the only way to get the confidence. It's like a muscle. Muscles don't get stronger unless we flex them yeah there is atrophy atrophy for sure if you don't use them so yeah i, I think i need to go to mexico for a year or I'm, get a friend who speaks spanish and make sure that they do not speak to you in english and that works simply it's a force you have to force yourself you force your mind to do it okay okay all right all right so in the States, you're working. Back in California, though, now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so t tell me about that process before you get to Houston. So I move, I start into getting into a, a nursing program okay. ASAP, like um, licensed vocational nursing, because I'm still working. So I'm yeah. working as a certified nursing assistant, you know, I have my CNA, getting even a little bit higher pay now. Yeah, yeah, Spanish. yeah. <laughs> you probably had Kaiser, you know, you. No, 
I wasn't at Kaiser. I was at uh, 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 it's called Sunbridge. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that Sunbridge used to work with a place called LA Care. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Okay, my bad. That, so, no, that's good. Yeah, I've, we'll talk off of what I do in real life. So yes, I'm very familiar. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's that's exactly it. I worked there, um, night shift. Okay, I would pick doubles, pick up doubles because I like money. Yeah, um, and I had a kid. And I paid for my licensed vocational nursing program. Okay. So finished LVN 19. Okay. So at 19 now, you can get to the money for real. Got the money. Dual language. You're credited or you don't have a degree, but you at least have all the certifications you need to be like fully functional. Two. And as a nurse. Exactly. Um, what's the next steps after that? <clears throat> more education. Yeah, I mean that isn't that the problem with America. But first, I had to, you know, celebrate myself. So okay, what? How'd you celebrate? I purchased a car with cash. Okay. Um, and some Tiffany gold. Now we we had an interview earlier today. I, I'm not gonna say who it was, but they were selling fake Tiffany. <laughs> now, are you sure it was real Tiffany? I bought it from the Tiffany store. Hey, I I, I just got to make sure with. Certification. Are you sure it wasn't on eBay? It, I, I wouldn't go to eBay. I just want to make sure. I got to so, clarify. Tiffany, my... Tiffany okay. Company, um, you, you get, I have an account. Okay, okay. And, you know, if I need my jewelry to be cleansed or anything else, I, my account is always there. Okay. Because I only buy my Tiffany jewelry from Tiffany. Hey, we, we, I just got to make sure. You know, this is a, um, a professional platform, and we got to make sure that what you got on is real. No. You know, that we, we, we got to wear, wear it. Okay, we got we we got to concern ourselves with that. All right, so um, nursing, working. Th is this when the relationship comes in? Is this when you get married? Like about that? Because I'm, I'm assuming we're close to that. Okay. Soon. Yes. So eighteen, um, like even before I finished a licensed vocational nursing, I um, was working in a hospital and okay. I met another registered nurse. Okay. Fourteen years my senior. Okay. My dad left at 11, so I didn't have a really strong, solid male figure in my life. He was a registered nurse, and I'm like, okay, I want to be a registered nurse. You know, how to do things usually you learn from people. I thought that I was learning from him. And mm. I did learn a lot of things from him. I definitely did. I do know now how to communicate with males a little bit better. Okay, okay. And um, I do know how males manipulate women and also how women can manipulate males. Oh, it goes both ways. You just heard, definitely you heard me say it. Go it both. definitely goes I both ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said it. I mean, you really almost got me to give you my black card just a second ago. You know I'm saying? telling you. I'm telling you. It goes both ways. I definitely know that. Okay. And I, I concur and I stand by that. Yeah. Um, however, I also learned the importance of presentation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there, There is a... The ability to present yourself to any audience, any group of people at any time um, will get you further than any skill that you have. Very true. Um, I think a lot of time what entrepreneurs miss, and we're going to jump into some of your journey here in a second, is that regardless of even what you're presenting to people, how you present it means more. It does. <laughs> it, like, Because people only get that first impression. Once. And it sticks with them. Even if you've came with something incredible after, they still may hone in on how they initially met you, how that environment initially was. So, yeah, I definitely agree with that. All right. So on to now you're a nurse. Let's fast forward some. You've moved from L.A. to Houston. Now, is that was that the first stop or was there no, stops in between? I've only been in Houston for about two years. OK, so L.A., then Houston. L.A., my mom's house in Georgia. I tell you, you, you this story is wild. <laughs> you can't handle this one. Okay, honestly. so so what happened in Georgia? I lived there. My okay. mom passed away in 2016, and because I got the move away order, I wanted to take a chance to breathe and have lived at free. So my mother was a person who was about legacy and wealth. Okay, and so in her passing, she left um, my sister and I house with. Um, about five acres. Nice. As well as property in St. Lucia and two vehicles. Yeah. Yeah. So you had the wealth journey established for you 
before you even really knew that it was happening? No, I knew it was happening. Okay. So were these conversations that y'all had as a family, like, hey, there's a trust. You can inherit this. You have this in Georgia. You've got this in St. Lucia. Like, so these were things that your family already had established. My mother. Just your mother. Okay. Um, t tell us about that. Like, um, how important was that for you to see that as well? So now you've got your aunt in your life who was an angel on one side. And then you've got your mom as an angel on the other who's now gifted you these details. My mother and my aunt were two peas in a pot. Oh, they were. Okay. They worked in cults. Okay. okay. So my mom called me. So my middle name is Aretha. Okay. She knew from the morning, moment that I was born that I was going to be some type of diva. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, Do you feel like you're a diva? Hell yes. <laughs> Need I say more? <laughs> no, you go ahead. Go ahead. I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. I'm and listening. So sometimes when my mother was not able to reach me, whether it would be the meaning her, the way that she would communicate to me, she would just call my aunt. Yeah. Because yeah, she could speak to you in a different way. Because exactly. it's not your mom. You know, it, it's a family member, but it's not your mom. Like we, we, you know, sometimes it's difficult for the parents to get through to the kids. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So in Georgia, you've got inheritance, you've got those details. How were you able to leverage that to what you're doing now? I chilled. So you didn't work for a while? No. Nope. What was that period of time? It was 2019 to the beginning of the end of 2019 to the beginning of 2020. So what about COVID time though? See, so now we're, we're hitting where people had masks and we're wiping everything off with Clorox wipes. Did you go back to work then? I did. Because that's when the money was getting made by the... I, I have a traveling nurse friend. Um, I, I, she was making more money than the doctors. Yes. Like, legitimately. Like, I was like, what, what are you doing? Oh, I'm flying to North Carolina. I'm going to be here for two weeks, but I'm going to make some thousands of dollars. And I was like, right, that's a joke. My sister made... I want to say like 300K in about six months. How? In Alaska. What what was going on for to be paid that much? Travel nursing, lack of lack of resource, scarcity. Yeah. So supply and demand had finally hit your industry. Mm -hmm. And now well, it almost feels like there's less nurses than there need to be now. Oh, there's always been less nurses. Okay. Okay. So 300,000 in six months. Was that an experience you had also or similar? So that's different because she was actually at the bedside. Okay. And so how were you making the money from home then? Well, remote. So after I became an LVN, I went to nursing RN school. Did the language help you being doing this at home also having the Spanish language as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. So because you were able to do different types of people all from the comfort of your home during COVID. Yes. There were lack of it, providers speaking Spanish. Yeah. So you were able to take... <laughs> That's crazy. So you had someone going, you had a friend or you said your sister or a friend going to Alaska. My sister was in Alaska in 2020. And she made 300000 in six months. Yes. And then you were able to work from home. Well, see, think, I've been working from home since 2017. Wait, wait. You doing all telemedicine? All telemedicine since 20, 2017. You don't go to a, a office. You don't work under. Do you work like with a physician's group or? I have my own medical practice. Medical oh, we need we need to get into that. How, how did you set that up? How, how did that go? So in 2013, I knew that there was a need for mental health care. Okay. Lack of mental health care. And so I went into the nurse practitioner program with the mindset of starting my practice. So in 2013, I started that program with the intent of starting a practice. So when I graduated in 2016, my framework for my practice was already built. Gotcha. Gotcha. So... COVID then accelerated your telemedicine business probably because yeah. everyone was doing everything behind Zoom, et cetera. Or... Nope. It was me telling I told y'all so. Because <laughs> you, cause you already knew that it was happening. Yep. The so. funny thing was at, before that, when I was I was trying to, trying to get some of my colleagues to, come on, guys, let's do this remote care. Let's do this telecare. Yeah. This is where the wave is going. Oh, you're barking up the wrong tree. And so I said, all right, peace. So you knew ahead of people and now they're probably scrambling to catch up now they're asking me for notes and you've got a business that they can probably work with you on so now you've got maybe a couple streams of income from people who are behind the eight ball with this so let's talk about what you're you're doing now then because the pitch was i'm gonna tell nurses how they can make more money so so what does that process look like it 
starts by realizing how much knowledge you have at your hands. Okay. And realizing that if that knowledge is attached to your why. Interesting. Okay. And explain. Explain. So individuals usually go into nursing or healthcare because of some reason. Sometimes they don't verbalize that reason, but typically is what I call their why. Yeah. Yeah. And that why, if if leveraged along with their knowledge, creates something that's magical. Okay. So in my industry, we always talk about a why story. Um, Same thing. Yeah. So I would need to be able to sit down if I'm going to prospect or talk to someone. I need to be able to display to them why I'm passionate about what I do. Yes. And what's interesting is. I would just assume all healthcare providers have the same why. They just want to help people. That's not true. See, that, that I would assume that. Like, um, I, I wouldn't have thought any other reason other than wanting to help people would you get into healthcare. Yeah, that's not true. Okay. Some are in it for the money. I, I, see, I... It, there's nothing wrong with that. No, no. I don't, I, just, I don't... Trust me. We all do things for money. Mm -hmm. But in my limited frame of reference, I would assume that... A uh, healthcare provider, they're more altruistic. They just want to help people. They Many want are. to see the world be better. But there's also the industry behind it as well that I think we forget about. Pharmaceuticals, they're in it for the money. Billion, billion, <laughs> they're in it for billion the money. dollar industry. Yeah, you know, um, pharma, um, pharmacy benefit managers, they're in it for the money. Um, some of them traveling nurses, they're <laughs> they was in it for the money <laughs> during that yeah. period of time. And then it sounds like you want to help nurses leverage their skills to make more money because it just doesn't have to be treating patients. There's other ways to monetize. So many ways. So, so give us some examples. So for starters, nurses, let's say because you already have um, your license, you're respected as having your license. Yeah. So you're already seen as an expert yeah. in yeah. your field. So because you're an expert, once you start speaking to someone who is not an expert, then that means you can teach them something. Okay. And people go to universities to be taught something. So if you are then going to teach someone who wants that knowledge, then you are the guru okay. of that particular knowledge and everyone has an experience that no one has had before. So it's not even a competition. It's a, a, a set of individualized markets that are just out there waiting to be tapped into. And then what you do is you find the parking lot for hmm. the persons who are interested in knowing what you have. Because there's always someone interested. Always. Always. And what you can't care what's crazy is because we had the conversation about my youngest in strep. I would have never known that the symptoms would have been different. I wish I could have had someone to talk to. Yep. Um, but it took Get multiple visits. It, so nurses can, separate of the work that they do at a hospital or et cetera, they can also be private. Consultation. Huh. Now, let me ask you this. Okay. What would you pay to avoid going to five different providers? Oh, I, me endless amounts because there you go. My, my youngest has sickle cell. There you go. So endless you're amounts. already yeah. having probably multiple instances when you're going all the time. To, okay, yeah. and you don't want to see your child in pain. Correct. Correct. So what if you had a nurse on retainer that you could call or text just to ask a question that no. they already know because they're familiar with treating sickle cell clients, children. Yeah. That, I mean, to me, that's invaluable because I've been, you know, just because of a fever, I got to rush to children's, you know, on a Friday night when it may not be anything major, but because of the condition, you got to make sure that there's no other underlying things that could be going on. So if I could text someone or call someone or telemedicine someone, that'd be invaluable for someone like me. So you already just gave a market. That you just told one whole way how one nurse who perhaps had five years experience on in the in the uh, pediatric yeah. ward taking care of sickle cell children or even oncology yeah. and hematology children that they can monetize themselves. You you just made one way. Yeah, because I've I've been through the fluid transfusion. Like I, I've I've sat there and watched my one year old go through that. Like and it's it's crazy to see. You yeah. know, you know, of course, she's older now, three. And, you know, hopefully we're getting 
to where we can manage things better. But it's a it's a challenge. It, it will be. It is. It's a constant challenge, yeah. especially like, you know, sickle cell is a lifelong. It is. Um, you know, experience that you would still benefit from that guidance at every single stage. Yeah. No, no. OK. So how do you help nurses, though, find their market? Like, what is your pitch? And then I've got three questions that I'm going to ask that I do with all entrepreneurs just to kind of, you know, give people some actionable things. But how do you help people specifically? First, I tell them that they can do it. So it's, it's that mindset. Yeah. OK. OK. Because that, that's the hardest part for most people. It is. Yeah. That's the hardest part. So after mindset, what are some of the things that you do? Research. OK. The market research. You figure out, you know, one subset of knowledge, right? But you might not know who needs that subset of knowledge. So then you go into um, like Reddit or yeah. Quora or um, ask the public. Yeah. Right? yeah. And you find out who needs to know information about sickle cell care management and where do they live? What do they eat? How do they look? How much do they make? What's their address? What are their races? What are their ages? And then from there, like you mentioned before, they can market themselves as a provider who's licensed and can give you care on retainer. But they park. They literally, all you have to do is create, create your garden based on those target attraction yeah. smells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the clients will find you. Man, I, I, I never would have thought of that. That That's... It's brilliant. That and is. I'm, I'm actually working on patenting. I should have already patented it, but my coaching per structure is just brilliant, I, I believe. No, it, I, just <laughs> hearing the basis of it, yes, it is brilliant. I, I, can, <laughs> I can say that because I talk to a lot of people um, and I want to know more about this even after we get off the, <laughs> the interview. All I'm right. going to have to charge you for that. Not at all. I am not. I no, do, I am not wait charging. Wait a moment. <laughs> I do charge 10 minutes to pick my brain. I am not paying nothing. Look, I you put the camera on me. $50 uh, uh, uh. for 10 minutes to pick my brain. It, it's on my website. I am not paying $50. I will get a coffee. <laughs> that, that is my offer to you today <laughs> in the interview. That is Guess my what? offer. Guess what? I negotiate well. Guess what? Listen to this. Because you've brought me here. Come on now, it should be free. I should get an hour. It, I'm going to give it to you for free. I should get an hour for free. However, <laughs> I'm also going to try to connect you with a nurse. <laughs> I'm just saying I should get four you, you hours get for more. free. You get more. At the minimum, four hours. No, I digress. Ten hours. Yeah, not not at all. This is unreasonable right now. You 30 minutes. Uh, what? <laughs> Are you here for 30? Let me I, tell you why. I... At, at some points, I make upwards of $1,000 an hour. I understand that. Trust me. I, I get that. I just feel like I should be in the free hour. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, come Guess on. Guess what? You already won. Uh, I did win. I'm a good... I One thing I can do is negotiate. I'm a good negotiator. Same. All right. So, a couple things. And let's talk back to your initial journey. When you started your business now, what are some things that you might have changed? Look back when you were first getting started. How would you have started things differently or what may have you done? Well, so... I, even though I always knew I wanted to have remote care, I had a brick and mortar. So I opened up, I started opening it up in 2017 and I had my grand opening in 2018. Okay. In Granada Hills, um, the Rose Yard. And um, it was important to me to open it on my mother's birthday because my mom had to, had passed away in 2016. So um, July 20th, 2018, I had my grand opening brick and mortar. My overhead was large yeah. because I had a brick and mortar, yeah. even though I was seeing ma majority of my clients remotely. So I, once I moved, when I tell you moved to Georgia, yeah. I closed my brick and mortar and I just continued to do what I was doing without the overhead. So if I had to go back, I would definitely tell my past self, why do you need the brick and mortar? Yeah. It's something about that location that makes you feel more professional, makes you feel like you arrived, but you don't always need it. You don't. Um, okay. I like that. Okay. So five years from now, where do you see yourself? With a PhD okay. in psychology. Okay. And door, um, John. Listen, go ahead. Million, multi-millionaire. Okay. So PhD still doing this business or do you plan to take your PhD and maybe be an educator? I'm an educator now. Well, well I'm saying like full-time faculty. I have a faculty now. Full-time? Like full-time. Okay. I could never do anything full-time because I don't like to work for people. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. I gotcha. Gotcha. And then, and then the last thing before we tell people where they can find you and all that good stuff. If a young entrepreneur came to you or a young nurse, mm -hmm. um, he or she was interested in your process and they said, hey, I want to invest in myself. What would you recommend to them to get themselves started? Well, first, I would ha have to ask, 
what is the reason why you want to start in the first place? It goes to that why story again. Yes. Yeah. It okay. always boils down to that. Okay. And if you can't tell me why, then I would say figure that out first. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So it, it sounds like... Because um, I won't take money from anyone who doesn't know their That's what I was going to ask you. you. It sounds like you won't just work with anybody. Nope. I that's won't. exactly what it sounds like. Okay. I like it. All right. Let the Dr. Rose, please, or Nurse Rose. Yes. Soon you, to be. Soon to be. Nurse Rose PhD. In we we got to put the doctor in it right now. So don't, tell, do, don't do that, though. Right in that camera right there. Tell the people where they can find you and all that good stuff. Nurse Rose. You can find me at Nurse Rose underscore. Um, it's a patented name, so cease and desist coming forth with for anyone else using the I'm name. I'm definitely going to start using it next week. I Go mean, ahead. I, I mean, it's Go too, ahead, because that's just money in my pocket. It's too late. <laughs> money in my pocket. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. But um, also at theroseyard.com, so it's www.t-h-e-r-o-s-e-y-a-r-d-e. Uh, -E -E, okay. Because it's uh, a name, family yeah. name. Um, additionally, you can find me on LinkedIn, Nurse Rose at the Rose Yard. You can find me um, on Nurses to Riches podcast. Okay. You can find me on your podcast. Of course, obviously, yeah. You can find me um, anywhere where the money resides. Uh, hey, we, we like that. Um, and you can also um, find this most interesting story. Like, and this is not even the half of it. Look, we we didn't we got to get you back then because we found out. Um, she decided to move to Mexico at 17, uh, <laughs> bought a brick and mortar building at like 19, um, speaks two languages, um, has birthed six children. Uh, <laughs> Including a set of twins. And a set of twins. I can't forget that. And can teach you nurses how to get to the bag. Yeah. All right. That is Horseman Academy. We're out. Thank you.